well, hey, come on up to the screen and uh, join me for the children's message. Uh, as always, you know, if we were in church together, I'd have you all gather around me here, but uh, we're not. But like I said last week, I can see you. Got that super x-ray vision that I can see out there. So thanks for being with us, with us today. You know, it's summertime, it's beautiful outside, there have been some gorgeous days, and I was remembering when I was a kid, there were some things I loved to do in the summer, and one of the things I loved to do was I loved to throw the baseball around. This is my old baseball mitt. I mean, this mitt goes back to, oh man, like 50 years, maybe more. And I'm not 50 years, yeah, maybe a couple more. It's a little small, because it's when I was a little kid. Um, but I used to play baseball with this, and I was thinking about going out and, and playing baseball. If any of you have maybe been on a Little League team or some other team, you know, if you get together and you, you pick some teams, you want someone who can catch the ball, right? You want someone who can throw the ball or hit the ball and run really good. You really want someone who can, who can fit in with what you're doing. Um, but that's not just, not just about baseball. What if you're going to go on the bike trail? You're going to go on the bike trail, maybe go down to the... Uh, the tunnels near Elroy, and it's, it's going to be a long ride, long ride, and you don't want someone who doesn't ride their bike much. I mean, you want someone who knows how to ride their bike, and so you want someone who really knows what they're doing, you know, and maybe they got a cool helmet like I got, you know, like that, and they like to ride their bike and, and go, go biking, so you want someone who's got a good helmet and knows what they're doing. Or maybe, maybe um, you're not going to go bike riding, Maybe you're staying home. Maybe it's a rainy day, kind of a gloomy, rainy day, and you say, oh, i got to do something. I know what I'll do. Let's bake something. Let's cook something or bake something. And I've got some rhubarb. Uh, this is rhubarb from our garden. And I, a oh, little secret, I don't really like rhubarb that much. But my wife and my daughter, they love rhubarb. And so maybe I would take some rhubarb, and I might do something with it. But you know what I need? I need someone who knows what they're doing. Like my mother. My mother makes a really good rhubarb crisp that my wife and my daughter like. So if I want someone to do something cooking, baking, preparing food, using rhubarb, I really gotta find someone who knows what they're doing, don't I? Someone who, who can do it right. Or let's say that um, I was putting together a team. Um, I, you know, when we're a little older in high school, you can do Odyssey of the Mind. Or maybe, maybe you're back in school and your teacher divides you into teams to do some work together and you're going to do something with um, numbers. Maybe you want someone who knows how to use a calculator, you know, who isn't scared of all those numbers, who doesn't look at numbers and go, what am I going to do? But is comfortable using numbers. You want somebody on your team who can do that. Or what if you wanted to start a band? Okay, so come on with me for a moment. If you wanted to start a band, you might want someone who plays the piano, you know, like, like Mrs. Bird here at church plays the piano. Now, I'm not the best person for that. Here's all I know. That's it. That's all I know. I wouldn't be a very good person to pick, but Mrs. Bird, why well, she'd be really good to have on your music team because she's like really good, or maybe Mr. Olson, Mr. Dean Olson, who's part of the, the uh, SOS band, or uh, we've got lots of other people here. Don't pick me, pick them. And actually, you probably wouldn't want to pick me for the rhubarb because I don't do that very well. You probably wouldn't want to pick me for baseball because I'm getting kind of old. I can ride my bike a little, but I can do this pretty well. I can do the calculator. We've all got something we can do, and. When we're making up a team, we look for people to make up the team and do a really good job. But you know, in the gospel reading for today, which is in the worship service, so you could watch the worship service video to hear the gospel. The gospel reading is from the, the Gospel of Matthew, and it's from the ninth and the 10th chapters. And early in the 10th chapter, Matthew tells us that Jesus got ready to send his disciples out into the world to tell everybody about him. And then Matthew says, here are all the disciples, all 12 of them. You know what? <clears throat> Jesus didn't do a very good job. I mean, Jesus didn't pick very good people. I mean, these guys didn't really know what they were doing. Like, one of the persons he picked was Matthew. You know who Matthew was? He was a tax collector. 
You go and ask your mom and dad if they like to pay their taxes. Nobody likes to pay taxes. I don't like to pay taxes. Do you really want someone who collects taxes on your team? Didn't Jesus should have had a tax collector on his team? And then another person he picked was a guy named Peter. Remember Peter? Peter. You know what Peter's going to do later? When Jesus is in trouble and needs his friends, someone's going to say to Peter, I think you know that Jesus guy, don't you? And Peter's going to say, not me. No, 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 no. Don't know him at all. Never met him. I don't have no idea who he is. He's going to do that once. He's going to do that twice. Three times he's going to say, I don't know Jesus. Do you really think Jesus wants Peter on his team? And then there's Judas. You know what Judas did? Judas betrayed Jesus so that he could be arrested and be crucified. Do you really want Judas on Jesus' team? Not likely. But you know what? Something strange happened. Jesus picked all these disciples who were no good, didn't know how to do things. They weren't good by writers. But Jesus was able to use them to change the world. Think about that. He changed the whole world. That's really important because, you know, sometimes, like I said, um, I'm not really good at rhubarb or baseball. I can do numbers okay. I can ride a bike for a while. I, you heard me play. You know that's it. I don't have a lot of really good gifts and abilities. I'm not really that spectacular. I'm not that talented. I don't wow people. But Jesus still uses me. Through the power of his Holy Spirit, Jesus can use me. Just like Jesus uses you. Think about that for a moment. Jesus can use you to change the world, just change your little corner of the world. Jesus can work through you. And you know, we have a phrase in our church, we say, God's work, our hands, okay? God's work, your hands. Because when you do God's work with your hands, you're doing the work of Jesus. And it's almost like, well, you are Jesus. It's almost like you are the presence of Jesus. No matter how big or tall you, small you are, no matter how strong or weak, no matter how smart or not, it doesn't matter. God uses you. Just like God used Peter and Matthew and all the rest of the disciples, God uses you through the power of his Holy Spirit. So I think I'm going to take my bike helmet off now because, you know, I may not be a great biker <clears throat> or a great baker, but Jesus uses me. Isn't that great? And Jesus uses you too. Thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, next week, I think Pastor Gene will be here. So come and join us again as we, we learn more about how much God really loves us. Have a great week. Bye-bye.